Danny Crisp here, 2019's Instructor of the Year here at Prime, and I'm reaching out to let you know I've created 10 quick episodes to help you become a professional driver, or if you've already got your CDL, to help you with some of the day-to-day -day operations. Now, these videos cover a wide variety of content, not just CDL prep, but also things that are gonna help you in that OTR phase of your drive. Now, I'm really excited to be releasing these videos as kind of a compendium to my current students, my previous students, but also hopefully future students as well to give them the resources they need to get the most out of their drive, the most out of that CDL, and to better their best. So hopefully this is going to be meaningful content that's going to help to accelerate your knowledge base and get you out on the road to success sooner. You know, do yourself a huge favor, make the call to Prime, find your path. Do you want to change your life? Do you want be your best, tired of having all that strive, now's the time to reinvest, pick up the phone and make a call, it's your time to give your odds, change your life, you know you can, sing it out loud, CDL, yeah my man, CDL, all right dude, CDL, now's the time, CDL, yeah go call Prime, CDL, oh yeah, CDL, make the move, CDL, no time to wait, get on up, let's move, so great. Okay, one quick thing about Prime's referral program before we get started. Now, Prime is such an amazing company at rewarding hard work. It's truly incredible the way that Mr. Lowe and the whole team share the success of this company from the top to the bottom in every phase. And one way that they do that is through the referral program. Every incoming driver is given an amazing opportunity to share in the potential wealth of their new career with a current driver for Prime at no personal cost to themselves. All they have to do is tell their recruiter the name and the driver code of a current driver for Prime. Now, if you already know a driver for Prime, please make 100% certain that you get their name and their driver code in. It is vital to the business model here to reward excellence and share in the success. In that regard, if you don't have a current friend or relative that's driving for Prime, for every new applicant that uses my code, I will personally donate $100 to Springfield's local food banks. They say that $1 equals four meals, so you'd be contributing 400 meals to Springfield's local families. That's pretty incredible. Remember, we're all in this together. Make sure to message me directly that you've used my code. That way I can track it and get that donation in. You can connect with me at any time on the information here on this YouTube page or through my Instagram. Now, let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Okay, on the previous episode, we talked about our straight line back, our offset, and our parallel. Hopefully that was really helpful stuff. Now we're gonna get into that alley dock. Now, in addition to that alley dock, we're also gonna learn how to fix that alley dock should it get a little off. And we're gonna use what I call the bump technique to just realign our trailer and get back in front of it. Now, in addition to that bump technique, we're also gonna learn two different resets we can use should we get into a little bit of hot water on those test day maneuvers. So, let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Okay, so let's begin discussing that alley dock, or what's commonly referred to as the 90. Now, this is one of the most common maneuvers you're going to do as an operator, so it's important that we get a pretty good understanding of it. Now, as far as a test day maneuver, once we realize it's just a few steps, it becomes a little less intimidating. So, let's get a closer look at it. Okay, so this is a brief overview. Now, let's get a little more specific about what all this means. Okay, so let's make a little bit of sense of this. Now, obviously we need to get into some sort of start position from there. We're gonna want our trailer to go left, so we're gonna put that cut in to the right. We're gonna back up to put some sort of an angle into our trailer and then realign our steers in some way that we can follow that angle that we've created. Now, your instructor can help you with some of the specifics on how to create that angle. Once you have, you're gonna try and follow that trailer into this box and from there it's kind of up to you. Some basic pointers, every foot it's a brand new back, really try and watch the trajectory of that tire and make sure that you're putting it on a good line. The objective is to be about six to 12 inches off this inside line. So if you're setting up too tight, steer left a little bit to push it off that cone. If you're setting up a little too wide, steer right a little bit to push it back inside. We wanna try and get as deep in the box as we can get and then we can use one of those two free pull-ups should we need to. So let's take a closer look at that out in the field. All right, so we are pulling up to get into our start position. 
for an alley dock, as always with all of our start positions, we want to stay centered, get ourselves into a good place to make a cut. Now we want our trailer to go to the left, so we're going to steer all the way to the right, to start putting an angle in that truck and trailer like we just talked about. At a certain point, we're going to stop and turn our steers in such a position to follow that angle, and your instructor can help you with that specific angle there. Now once we've got it in a good position, we're just going to follow that trailer. I'm going to watch it as it moves toward the box. One to two foot per second again is our ideal speed. That's fast enough to watch the trajectory, but not so fast we get out of control. And we just want to maintain a tight angle on the inside of that cone. We want to be six to 12 inches off the inside, and we need to be getting in front of it as we're getting in the box. So that requires us to be turning all the way left to get in front of that trailer. At that point, we straighten out our steers and back up until the trailer's inside the box and we bump the dock. Okay, so that's what it looks like when it looks good. I don't know if you noticed, but we got that tire to that cone line. At that point, we turned all the way left to get in front of it and it worked out pretty good. But sometimes it doesn't come in that clean. And if we can't get that trailer deep enough in the box, then we're gonna need to use that pull up to the left. Now, no sweat, we pull up 15 to 20 foot, we get ourselves in a better position and we come at it again. And when we do, what we're trying to do is make sure that tire clears the cone and as soon as it does, we need to be pushing the trailer back up to the left to get close to this wall by steering to the right. Then we get as deep in the box as we can, and we can use that second free pull up to clean it up a little bit better. So let's head out into the field and take a look at what that looks like. Okay, sometimes we come in a little too tight and we need to pull up to come at it at a better angle to the left. So we're pulling up 15 to 20 foot to put those trailers in a wider position, pulling up left points at a little right. And then we're coming in at a softer angle. We were a little too tight the first time, so we're getting in front of it a little bit sooner this time, creating an easier angle towards the inside wall there. And again, once we get ourselves comfortably aligned, we turn all the way to the left to get in front of it. And just like that, we back up until we bump the dock. Okay, so that's what it looks like when we miss just a little bit, have to pull up to the left that 15 to 20 foot, and then come back at it from a better angle. Now, once we got as deep in the box as we could, met a certain threshold, then we can pull up to the right to set up for that bump technique. So let's talk a little bit more about the setup for that bump technique and then the execution for it. All right, sometimes as we're coming into our alley dock, or our truck stop parking, we're a little tight on the inside wall. Um, better to be tight on the side we can see always. So sometimes to do that, we push ourselves a little harder to the left by steering right and end up needing a pull up. No sweat from here, we can pull up to the right to set up our bumps. Okay, so the setup for that bump technique, if we're in a situation like this, no sweat, we're gonna pull up to the right, get ourselves back to flush, get our tractor back in front of our trailer. At that point, we're gonna get our steers straight. Once we got our steers straight, we're gonna pull all the way up to the end of that box, we're gonna get our real estate. So we're gonna get flush, we're gonna get straight, and then we're gonna get our real estate. And when we do that, we're gonna be in a position somewhat like this. And from there, we can work on how to bump that thing back into alignment. So let's take a look at that setup out in the field. Okay, so we can see right here, we're inside the box. We're just a little too tight on that inside wall. Our rub rail of our trailer is not parallel to that line. So no sweat, like we just talked about, we're gonna steer all the way to the right, get back flush in front of our trailer, then straighten up our steers and pull all the way up to that blue line. From that position, we'll have enough real estate to bump this trailer backwards and set up for our bump technique. Okay, so after we get set up for the bump technique, we're gonna ask ourselves two questions. The first question is, which way does the back of this trailer need to go to get parallel to this line right here? Now, we can see as we're looking at this, the back of the trailer is a little closer to this line than the front is, which means in order to get parallel, it's gonna need to go further away. It's gonna need to go to the right. If I need my trailer to go right, I'm going to steer 
to the left. Now, once I put my steers in that position, my next question is gonna be, how much do I need to bump it over? Now, this has everything to do with how close to parallel you are. If you're very close to parallel, it's gonna be a small bump. If you are very far away from parallel, obviously it's gonna require a bigger push to get there. So, with that understanding, let's head out into the field and take a look at what this looks like when we execute it correctly. All right, so as we just discussed, we're gonna steer all the way to the left to push the back of the trailer over to the right here. Once we got a good push in it, we're gonna steer all the way back to the right to get back in front of it. Essentially, we're just pointing our trailer and then getting back in front of it to see if our line's good. And in this situation, we bumped it very well. That rub rail's parallel, so at this point, we straighten out our steers and we just back ourselves up until we bump the dock. Okay, so that's what an alley dock looks like when it lands correctly. It's what an alley dock looks like when we have to pull up to the left to come at it from a better angle. It's what an alley dock looks like when we set up for our bump system and get ourselves back into the box that way. Hopefully these different corrections helped you guys understand how to execute your alley dock and how to fix it. Now, speaking of corrections, let's take a look at a couple different resets we can use on that straight line and on that offset should we get off just a little bit. Okay, so now we'll talk about a couple different resets we can use to fix our trailer's position. That first one is something called a directional. Now we use this when we like our trailer's overall position, but we just wanna point it in a different direction. What's also nice about this is we can use it in a small amount of space. Sometimes you're at a ship or receiver and you just need to point your trailer into a better position. We can use this to do that. Now right here, we need our trailer to point more to the left. So we're gonna pull up to the right and then get back in front of it and that should fix our position pretty good. So let's head out into the field and take a look at what that looks like. All right, so sometimes we just need to pull up to point our trailer in a better position. Right now our angle's a little too tight on that left wall. So we're gonna pull up to the left to point that trailer more to the right and then get back in front of it. This should make that angle a lot easier for us to put a small cut in and push that trailer over a long distance, pushing it right by steering a little left here and then getting back in front of it. Sometimes we just need to point our trailer a little bit on the way forward. Okay, so that's what it looks like when we do a directional reset out in the field, that two turn. Now, sometimes we need to make a larger adjustment. We're in a situation like this and we need to move that trailer laterally. So in this situation, we're gonna use the serpentine. We're gonna to go towards that gap. Then we're gonna go away from that gap to realign our trailer. And then we're gonna get back in front of it. It's three consecutive turns. Now, two things about this. We wanna make sure we tailor this adjustment. If we only need to move laterally six inches, don't go six feet. Make sure that you're making the adjustment for the outcome that you want. The second thing is make sure that second turn is equal in distance or duration. That way that trailer can get realigned in the box. <clears throat> this is where a lot of students make a mistake is as they're pulling up, they shortchange that second turn and they get in front of it a little too soon or they don't get in front of it at all and they end up having a tougher position to back from. So make sure that that second cut is equal in distance or duration. Now, let's go out into the field and take a look at what that looks like. All right, so as we can see here, we have a larger gap on the left side. So we're gonna first close that gap, driving left towards our gap. Six to 12 inches is what we're targeting here. So we get that covered and then we move back to the right here. We're pointing our trailer left so it can be realigned in the box. And then finally, we're steering left to get back in front of our trailer. That's our one, two, three serpentine turn. From here, we can back up nice and slow and controlled into our parking spot, one to two foot per second, watching the back of our trailer. Remember with our serpentine pull up, we wanna make sure that we first tailor it, that if we're only trying to go six to 12 inches, we're not going six to 12 foot with that first cut. And then also make sure that second cut 
is equal in distance or duration to that first one. We wanna make sure we're pointing our trailer well. So watch it as you're setting up in that second turn. And from here, we just back ourselves all the way into our truck stop parking spot. All right, a lot of good ground was covered today. We really got a good look at that alley dock as well as a couple resets we can use should we get into a little bit of hot water on our test day. Now, over the next couple episodes, we're gonna cover a lot of good ground. First, we're gonna discuss what those practical backing maneuvers look like out in the real world at truck stops. Then we're gonna go over that drive section, which is the final section for your CDL test. I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Right on, man. Right on. Alley Doc.